Well, hello there, friends. Sorry I am late. I was dealing with an Instacart order. Ah! Okay, so we're talking about have you lost your sense of smell? Whether this is because of COVID or other things, people are really unhappy when they can't smell. Okay, so we talked about this the, um, a little bit on Tuesday. So if you missed that one, go back and watch it. Today is kind of like a part two, and this is the secret sauce, okay? So there are two types of smelling loss, complete loss, um, also called anosmia or anosmia, and partial loss of smell called hyposmia or low smell, okay? Loss of taste is estimated to be linked to the loss of smell 95% of the time. Okay, so they're, it's like almost all the time, right? So usually you see both of them together. And I mean, if you've ever been sick and you had a cold or whatever, you can't smell, you just can't taste, right? Everything tastes like, to me, like clay. It has no flavor. Okay, so what are the causes of the loss of smell? Um, so COVID-19 is a huge one right now. Okay, a Mayo Clinic study found an average of 41 percent of COVID patients had experienced a loss of smell and taste. The CDC reports the average duration is eight days, but many people are suffering much, much longer than that. And that is the problem. It's not eight. We can all deal with a week of not being able to smell or taste. But when you get to three months, six months, I know friends who've lost, I mean, they're at like a year. That's just like, I would lose my mind. Number two, cause is allergies, the common cold or upper respiratory infection. Okay. All of that basically is inflammation. 60% of people who get the common cold experience a loss of smell. Um, but again, this is due to inflammation in the nasal cavity, which is not un unheard of. It's not surprising. Um, this is not due to the, the non-neuronal support cell damage that you see in COVID-19 patients. Interestingly, the use of nasal decongestants and topical zinc products um, that are used nasally can actually result in a loss of smell. So be careful how you're treating yourself because you could be making the problem worse. Number three cause of loss of smell is congenital. Okay, so you're basically born that way. It affects about 1 in 10,000 people. Unfortunately, it's often detected late in childhood because how do you know? I mean, like, how do you ask an infant or a one-year-old or a two-year-old, can you taste it? You know, like, there's just, it's not until they're old enough to kind of express that their, um, their ability to taste and smell that you would actually get that information. Number four is neurodegenerative disorders. So basically the nerves breaking down from something, okay? It may be a sign of Parkinson's or Alzheimer's. It's very rare to be linked to those, but it can happen. And number five on the list is age, okay? Loss of smell is common as we get older. It can be related to worsening allergies, um, nasal polyps, etc. Fortunately for people as they age, even though they're losing their sense of smell, they the taste hardly declines with it. So they can still taste their food, they just may not be able to smell as much. Unfortunately, that's a problem because, again, if you can't smell if food is spoiled, you can't smell if there's something burning, you know, these are all problems that you certainly don't want to have as you um, get at, at any age, but especially as you get older. Okay, so let's get back to the olfactory training. How do we fix this? The initial studies were done in Germany in 2009. The training involved the use of four different scent types, floral, fruity, spicy, and resinous scents, okay? So represented by rose oil. So this is rose essential oil, which is absolutely amazing and very expensive. Um, for those of you who want to or need to try this, um, I and, and rose is out of your budget, geranium is my go-to. So that is one that I would consider, which is also yummy. A lot sweeter than rose. Rose is a lot more mild. Okay, then um, it's the next one is lemon essential oil. Then there's clove essential oil. And lastly, eucalyptus. Okay, so those are your four oils. 
Um, basically, what you do is the patient would smell, or the person, I call it a patient since I'm a doctor, smells each oil for 10 to 20 second intervals twice daily for a minimum of 12 weeks. You actually take about a 30 second or longer break between oils. So the whole process, if, if you're doing, let's say, let's say you did 30 seconds and you took a 30 second break, each one is less than five minutes, twice a day. Okay, I mean, if you can't smell it, five minutes twice a day, I think we can handle, right? So doctors at Stanford and Emory repeated this study years later from the 2009 study on those experiencing post-infectious loss of smell or unknown causes. And um, they said the group doing the olfactory training had larger numbers regaining their sense of smell and a faster recovery than the control group, okay? So what they ask you to do is keep a journal of rating your sense of smell from one to five, where one is nothing and five is a feels like a full smell, a full scent, and you keep track of it over a period of time. Some doctors um, suggest you can do this up to six months. Clearly, if you can't smell, I would be doing this probably two, three times a day until I could smell. <laughs> I just would. So if you're interested and you want more details on this, send me a message. I'll be happy to hook you up with ordering these oils at wholesale prices because, I mean, clearly you want rose. You just need to get it at a discount, right? But if you want the other oils, I can hook you up with that as well. Make sure you're getting quality oils. Don't go to the convenience store and buy these oils. You're not going to get good quality. All right. So on that note, happy smelling to everybody. Hope you have an awesome weekend and I will see you next Tuesday for another live